Hey, what's up guys? This is Mixing Vocals, the third part in our series this week, all about vocals. Um, one quick thing I want to say before we just get right into it is, if you get part one right, which was recording vocals, and you do things that I mentioned in the video, like trying to get the room quiet and all that other stuff, if you do that part right, and if you do the editing vocals part right and produ uh, producing the vocals where we do all the edits and get the comps if you get those nice and clean and tight then believe it or not this part three becomes very very simple um, I don't want to do a traditional mixing vocals video where we uh, have a track and we're mixing vocals to a track I m would much rather that you guys get a general concept and that general concept is when you're recording the vocals there are no don't you know record it clean no uh, plugins uh, before the mic, no, no compressing, no need to do any of that. Just record the vocals nice and clean. And then basically you have four components you'll be using. So anytime you mix vocals, always think these are the, the four that you should consider or will probably end up using. Uh, a compressor, okay? So first you're going to actually compress the recorded vocals, which were recorded clean. An EQ to shape the tone, right? To kind of sculpt um, the texture of the thing. You're always going to have reverb. The reverb is used for setting an, an ambience or, or a stage for where the, the vocalist is so we can imagine it. And lastly, you'll have delay. Okay, And the delay is for uh, anything, from, anything from like um, just a cool effect to creating a rhythm with, with, with the voice. Um, and those are the big four, and you're probably going to find you're using those most of the time. But as I've uh, already mentioned, if you get part one and two right, uh, you got your work cut out for you. So this is the session that I had uh, that I showed you guys from my buddy Paul um, in the second video. And I decided to just not use any of the music, and I basically deleted everything else. So what you guys are seeing is actually a verse... A top line, let's just call it. I don't remember if it was a verse or what. But as you guys can see, I guess it was a verse. See, I put V1, V1-2. So this is basically the top line of a verse. And Paul likes big harmonies, you know, like the uh, barbershop quartet harmonies. He's always liked that. And on this song, he had laid down a high part, a mid part, a, a, a slightly lower mid part, which I marked mid two, and then a super low like bass part. And let me show you guys uh, how I set this up. And you might want to take note for when you do choruses. If you like to do choruses where there's a lot of vocal harmonies when the hooks come in, this is usually how I like to lay it out. So basically I have my V1 and V2, and I'll show you guys how I'm routing them. My V1 and V2, this is kind of like my stack. This is all one single line. It's clean, and this is a stack for it. So here's the lead. Here's the other lead. It's going to this bus channel right here called lead so basically my two top lines going to lead and these hooks i mean these hooks these harmonies these oohs and ahs are all going into my uh background this bkg and now you see i put some plugins on it but i just i just want to say something real quick guys there really is i know you're probably expecting me to do all these fancy tricks and uh pull out all these crazy plugins let's just hear what i got from getting parts one and two right recording and producing all right let's just go over these tracks real quick can't you see the brighter side of life hidden behind so that's just paul's one voice now i know in part two uh from a couple days ago i basically told you guys to fuse everything together and i do do that in this case i decided to have just a singular top line and i wanted to blend a stacked version underneath. I actually did a lot more takes with Paul on this stuff than I told you guys to do. I told you to do three. Uh, with his stuff, I mean, hes I consider him a great vocalist and I usually like to let him cut loose. So the more iterations he gets to do this, you know, his lines, I, I know I'm gonna get cooler variations and stuff. So I had plenty to choose from, so I decided to really lay it on. So that was the lead vocal. Here is the stack and I'm gonna, I'm going to mute that, that anchor track I just played you. Let's listen to the stack. Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all those... So, all right, we hear the multiple voices, right? But as I told you guys in part two, 
the whole idea here is this isn't something we want to put up front. You know, this is this is more of a thickening agent for his anchor track, which is this. So then I start blending these two things. Can't you see the brighter side of life hidden behind all those... Okay, now I'll move the uh, levels real quick and, and play you uh, one and, and two at the same time. I just, I want to bring up something, guys. I don't know if you can tell, but I can kind of tell that I've already treated those tracks to compression and maybe some mild EQing, okay? And this is why my inserts are completely empty here because it kind of sounds like I may have done this in a previous session. Uh, this is like a six-year-old uh, six session and I don't remember what's what anymore, but to me, when I listen, it sounds squeezed. So b before I do an AB on that stack, I, I, let me just say this. When you record the vocal clean, it's in its raw form, okay? It's great. The com a compressor, when you put a compressor on it, it's going to tighten it up. It's just going to tighten it up, okay? And it'll sharpen it up a little bit. It'll give it some presence, some body, almost like it's being cued, okay? That's why you always put the compressor first. You put on the compressor and you get this thing together. You get it tight. The next thing you would do is put on an EQ to shape that new tightness, that tight ball of clay. Just imagine like it's a ball of clay, like, like putty. You know, it's like super soft, but then you condense it and it's like a ball and then you could actually shape that ball. That's why the e uh, compression and EQ, you got to deal with first. And the reverb and delay live on the other side of that. But I just wanted to mention, if if this was raw vocal right now, I probably would, you know, I, I would have compression and EQ. But it sounds like I already compressed and EQ'd some of this. Anyway, let's do a quick AB on what is this stacking track actually doing. All right, so I'm going to just play the solo anchor track and, and bring this in and out a few times. Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all those city lights It's the only place our happiness is found All right, now, you know, you can hear uh, a couple of the lines going off and, it, and it, it's probably, it's partly Paul's fault, it's partly my fault because we probably didn't take enough time either during editing or trying to uh, do another couple more runs of the recording. It's not terrible, it'll blend into a mix, but this is why I said in the editing video, you got to, you know, the phrases have to stop at the same time. You really got to listen to pitch, make sure the pitch is locking and all that. Anyway, so as you guys can see, I'm not taking away from the anchor track by totally cranking this up and saying, oh, look at me. I'm using this really as a fattener. Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all those city lights It's the only place our happiness is found All right, cool, you guys getting that? Now, I'm running that into this bus, like I said, and I got some other things here, but let's not get into that. Let's go over one by one uh, the harmonies, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and mute the lead lines we just heard, and let's just go through the harmonies real quick. I think they're all linked. I'm going to unlink them. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, so there's the high part. Now, I know I compressed these. I probably squeezed them a little bit too tight because you guys can kind of hear they're getting right. They're kind of breathing a little bit. They're really kind of, I probably overdid it. But again, I probably had music. And it was probably calling for a little bit more aggression on the on the compressor, and I probably that's probably what I did. Whatever, but you can already hear the editing, right? It's already panned out. It's already it's already the thickened version, right? So this is the stereo bounce from an, from an, a previous editing session, right? We know that. So I got the high. What did I do with the high? Um, panning wise, I, I kept it in the middle, and I'll tell you guys why I kept it in the middle because I also had a low, and it turned out that the low. I also kept it in the middle. Paul's low was actually an octave to that high. So if I soloed them both, it's essentially the same note. So I figured instead of panning one hard left and hard right, and these are at the extremes of a scale, it's the highest and the lowest part. I figured let's just balance them and put them down the middle and got this. Ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. 
Okay, so pretty simple there. And then he had two midlines. And now keep in mind, every single one of these stereo track, every single one of these um, tracks in general, they're already stacked. So, I mean, guys, think about it. I've got, I've got those two verse lines, right? I've got the two verse lines. And then I've got four parts of harmonies. But you guys, you guys know from, from video two, every single one of these stereo files, except this first one, this first one I decided to have complete control over the anchor track. But everything else here, I mean, you're probably, you probably, I don't know, it's, you know, I don't know, there's probably like 20 voices going here at the same time, something like that, you know, 16 to 20, who knows. Um, but, so, that's why that editing, editing part is important. You're, you're doing most of the coloring in there, really. Anyway, so, so, I put the left, he, here, let's listen real quick, just so you guys, just so you guys can hear it once. So, here's the, the mid part. And here is the second mid part. And those two harmonies are pretty close to each other. They're a few notes away, right? They're both in that mid range. And so what I decided to do was instead of keeping them down the middle as well, because now, you know, it's getting a little crazy. I've got a verse that's already, I got an anchor track, the verse, the top line in the middle. Then I've got a stack for that verse. And that already has, you know, some spreading out because it's, uh, it's layered with a bunch of vocals. Uh, then I've got a high harmony and a low harmony, both stacked down the middle. So I knew I had to get these out of the way, and that's what I did. I went a little left, a little right, and, and got this out of them. Right, so it just kind of got out of the way. Okay, so guys, let's, let's review real quick, right? Uh, the two verse tracks are basically going into the one called lead. And then all of my harmonies, all four harmonies are going into BKG. The tracks that I'm playing, you guys, sound like they've been compressed before they were comped or right as they were rendered as stereo files. I probably already had another session where I compressed everything and EQ'd it, okay? And if I did, it was minimal. This could potentially be no EQing at all and just a little bit of compression. I, I don't remember, I can't say for sure. But, so basically we treated it with compression and EQ. And then I, I just leveled everything off and panned, right? We just did nothing more than adjust volumes to get balances and, and do some panning. And now what do I do? On the lead, do you guys remember if, if some of you guys watched it, I'll, I'll maybe leave a link below the um, mixing with free with the VOS plugins. I decided to use only four VOS plugins here. And because I didn't use the Thrill Seeker uh, limiter, which was the, this is the 1950s, um, it's modeled after a 1950s broadcast limiter, and I didn't get a chance to use it in the example video uh, when I was showing you guys how to use the VOS plugins because there were no vocals. Here there's vocals. I thought, perfect time to pull this out. Plus, you guys can replicate this bus configuration if, if you want for, it, for one of your sessions. <coughs> but there's really not much to configure here. It's, I put on the uh, 1950s uh, broadcast limiter, and I took the nasty delay. Notice I'm, I'm not even putting on reverb on this lead. I just wanted to put a little delay. So let's hear, hear real quick what the compression does. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo our lead. And actually, let me just loop it so it just keeps looping around here. I'll put it right here. Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all those city lights. It's the only place I... All right, so tightens up the whole glues, kind of glues it together and tightens up those two lines. And then I added a nasty delay. Um, I they used a preset, I used this one. But check out how far back I tucked it because it, it's a pretty intense delay. There, it really starts flowing. I just wanted that subtle kind of ocean happening underneath the vocal, you know, just kind of that floatiness. You hear it on the stop, right? I, I, that's why I'm using the delay to make it kind of, like I said, carry over. Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all those city lights. It's the only place I... So you see I just bypassed them. Let me do that a couple times. 
Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all... So it's actually not doing that much, but enough to where it kind of like, it kind of sounds like it's a vocal off a record, right? Now on the backgrounds, again, I put in a, a VBL. Uh, they have a nice preset called the Exciter. Actually, check this out. Here's what, it, you know, I'll, I'll bypass it. I really, really like this. Uh, and I didn't really do anything. I just put in the plugin. Here, let's do it before and after here. I'll solo them. Do you guys hear that crap, man? I, I don't know, maybe, you know, I don't know. I, on my system here, that low just gets round and instant air on the highs. And all we're doing is compressing it. Let me go a couple more times. I mean, that sounds pretty silky, right? I mean, that exciter's pretty sweet. Anyway, and then to top it off, uh, I added, remember, Epic Verb. I showed you guys this too. I'm literally, I'm, I'm using actually three plugins and they're all free. They're, it's, it's the uh, VOS, uh, the VO, you know, Bootsy stuff. So basically, what do we got? We got a 1950s um, uh, compressor limiter that's adding some really beautiful textures. You know, they don't make them like they used to. Uh, on the lead vocals, we're not even applying a reverb. I mean, there's no reverb. I, you know, we're using a delay sort of as a reverb. It just kind of floats the thing along. And on the backgrounds, I slapped on a... Actually, you know what? It says default. I just opened this thing exactly to what it's set to. And then I just... I gave it a little bit more side to spread it out. This is kind of cool. I didn't mention this before on the Epic Verb in the other videos. But it's nice. When you push it to side it throws the reverb aside and in this case it works out nicely because I'm applying this to our background tra uh, track, right? This is the one where I'm actually panning it to move it out of the way for the lead line. So I thought, cool man, I'll spread it a little bit. Here, let's, let's see as I spread it what it does. I'll just swing it both ways. So, and then I, I tucked it back. So basically, my computer's starting to crap out here, but I, we're almost done. So guys, I mean, so l let's see if it plays everything here without crashing on me. Can't you see the brighter side of life? Hidden behind all those city lights. It's the only place our happiness is found. Well, I don't know about you guys, but it's it's starting to crackle for me out here. The computer can't take it for some reason. I don't know. It's been buggy lately, but it, it really is irrelevant. The, the big takeaways are the majority of the work in mixing isn't actually done in mixing. It's done in getting the first part right, the recording the vocals, and then producing the vocals. That's actually like 70 to 80% of it. The mixing's the other 20. You see, we... I mean, what am I using here? I'm using a reverb, a delay, and a limiter twice, so... Anyway, guys, I mean, this is a, a, pr a pretty, you know, a pretty broad topic, and I know there's a lot of videos on it, and the funny thing is, most of you guys are probably spending time looking for mixing vocals, but again, I can't stress it, you know, mix, this is all supplemental, the mixing supplemental, it's those other two parts that I see people doing terribly with, but at the same time, they're looking on... Uh, on YouTube for videos on how to mix. You know, it's shit in, shit out. You got to really take the time on the first two parts. But, you know, obviously mixing is important. Anyways, I hope you got some ideas here about how to pan and and bussing. Uh, and I think this is, I'm pretty burnt out on vocals, guys. Uh, we've been doing this all week. Um, you know, next week, maybe we'll focus on some other areas. Anyways, I hope you, uh, you've enjoyed the series and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.